guidance approval is below 50% for the first time uh, that uh, since we started tracking uh, this administration. So the honeymoon in many ways, it's over and the president is facing a set of challenges. Uh, Afghanistan is certainly one of those challenges and it's very much up front uh, in the news today. However, it's not restricted just to Afghanistan. Uh, the president's numbers when it comes to his job approval are underwater in, on immigration. Uh, he's at 47% uh, on immigration. They are uh, underwater in foreign affairs now. He went from about 55% a month ago to 49%. That's a six point drop uh, in foreign affairs. Uh, we've seen a four point drop in fighting terrorism. He was at 55% at the end of July. Today he's at 50, 51%. Uh, percent. But really extending beyond foreign policy, fighting terrorism, Afghanistan, uh, Biden's job approval in terms of managing the economy and in terms of uh, stimulating jobs have started to slip as well by uh, several points. Um, and so if we compare again to a month ago, the stimulating jobs is down from 58% approval to 54% approval and managing the economy is down from about 57% approval to 55% approval. So still net positive, but not as strong as they were as recently as 30 days ago. And certainly for most of the first six months of the administration. And this can be explained in many ways. Um, on one end, uh, voters, especially Biden's base is coming out of a sugar rush of sorts uh, in terms of job stimulation and support, uh, uh, especially amongst those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. That's because of several trillion dollars spent in COVID relief money uh, that were uh, pushed out by the US government in the first uh, quarter of the year by the end of March of this year. And then certainly the resurgence of COVID-19 has had an impact as well. The Delta variant has started to affect businesses again, started to affect uh, uh, employers and employees again, and that's reflecting itself in the, in, in the numbers. So fundamentally, we've gone from Biden being in the range of 52 to 54% approval um, a couple of weeks ago, and certainly much higher a month ago, he was at 59% at the end of July, to actually now dropping below 50% and being at 49% overall approval, with approval across all of the categories that we track, uh, having slipped by several points for Biden. And of course, on foreign policy, given that's front and center, that slip has been, you know, six points, uh, which is fairly significant and it's been fairly fast. So those are the numbers that we're seeing. In terms of political implications, um, as I mentioned, um, every presidency has a honeymoon. Some presidencies, their honeymoon with voters is short. Other presidencies, their honeymoon with voters is much more protect, uh, protracted. Um, in terms of the Biden administration, that honeymoon lasted for the better part of five or six months. However, uh, now the administration is having to face a set of challenges that existed for the country. Um, uh, let's say, obviously, battling COVID-19 and making sure that the majority of Americans are vaccinated, but not just the majority, making sure that we can reach that 75% vaccination threshold or better, where we believe we will have uh, uh, reached herd immunity or are close to being able to reach herd immunity. And that's been a challenge for the administration. And obviously COVID-19 has a lot of impacts on the economy. Uh, immigration is an organic challenge for the administration. There's over 200,000 uh, illegal uh, immigrants crossing the border every single month. And that number has just skyrocketed um, since the beginning uh, of the year. Uh, that's an issue that the administration will have to deal with and will have to contend with sooner rather than later. And we know from our polling that its initial attempts to manage the issue through uh, Vice President Harris and her trip to Central America 
did not yield um, uh, traction with voters. And in fact, there was a backlash for uh, the administration's tardy visiting of the border and of border uh, support for border, border patrol to try to stem the flow of illegal immigrants in the country. And then, of course, some issues appear to be uh, of the administration's own uh, making. Um, and I won't speak for myself, but I'll speak through the numbers that we're seeing. Six in 10 voters believe that the pullout from Afghanistan was not well thought out and that it was hasty and disorganized and improperly planned. This is something that pops out very clearly um, in our uh, polling. Um, in, a, in a similar fashion, majorities of voters believe that uh, the pullout from Afghanistan has hurt the credibility of the United States amongst other nations. And the thing that really strikes out for voters is the fact that the United States controlled the country with 1,500 troops as recently as 30 days ago. Today, we can't even control the airport in Kabul with 6,000 troops. So there's actually been a net inflow of troops because of the way that the pullout was executed. Uh, and this is something that a majority of voters um, uh, says indicates or highlight that the pullout from Afghanistan was mismanaged. And as we've seen in the polling that the Hill and Harris X uh, released last week, although 64% of American voters agree with the decision to pull U.S. troops out of Afghanistan, that decision is not a veneer for how the pullout from Afghanistan was handled. And only about 45% of voters, even slightly less, uh, believe that the execution was done satisfactorily and approve of the way that the pullout uh, occurred. So we're seeing several issues uh, exerting themselves and voters starting to pay attention. Um, Afghanistan is certainly the issue that is top of mind for the Biden administration, but really immigration is a sleeper issue. COVID-19 and the race to herd immunity is an issue that the administration will have to contend with. Um, the way that voters simply put, think about it is that the job of the Trump administration was to get the vaccine and they did that. The job of the Biden administration is to get the vaccine shot in people's arms. And there's still a lot of work to be done on that front. And this is, again, something that clearly emerges uh, in the data. And I would say that rising crime in American cities is also a sleeper issue. And we've done polling together, and there's a lot of publicly available polling out there that shows that voters increasingly are starting to react to increasing uh, crime, uh, crime in the country. Are we yet at a point where fund the police becomes a commonplace slogan amongst voters? Perhaps not, but a lot of voters are starting to recalibrate their perspective and their uh, perceived views of the police. And in a recent Harvard Caps Harris poll, of which I co-direct as well, a, an overwhelming majority of voters said, we need more funding for the police, we need more police in the street, we need more safety. So all of these issues are coming together for the Biden administration. And I would expect that without active engagement over the course of the next six months and some clear wins for the administration across all of these issues, that the trajectory of um, the administration's approval um, uh, will uh, at best be steady uh, at or around 50 plus or minus, or it'll be on a uh, downward path as it has been over the course of the last 30 to 45 days once the honeymoon really, um, uh, really ended for the administration.